Sinister 800T gas stations. That's the perfect match. <sighs> but I guess there's one thing missing. I wish I could, you know, shoot video on Sinister 800T as well, but that'll remain a dream for now, so I guess I'll have to continue taking photos with it. What? What happened? Did it just... Did it just change? No way. I mean, it looks like 800T now, does it? That's crazy. I'll, I have to try it again. Kodak Portra 400, yeah? <laughs> it works. Okay, how about Ilford HP5? Oh my god, that's, that's unreal. But I guess you can't do that one. Lomography purple, huh? Okay, that's it. I'm out. I'm quitting. I'll, I'll have to tell the world about this. Wouldn't it be nice if that was true? If we could simply transform our video footage into our favorite film stocks, even though some of these film stocks aren't even available on motion picture film? Well, in a way, it is possible with the plugin that I used to edit and color correct the intro of this video. The company Dehancer approached me some while ago and asked if I would be willing to try one of their plugins for color correction and video effects. So just as a little disclaimer, this is a promotional video, but Dehancer will not see the video before the upload and they encouraged me to state my honest opinion. As somebody who mainly does photography, but has to play around with videography as well due to the videos that I post here on YouTube, ideas and tools to improve my video skills are always welcome. And sadly, shooting Super 8 or 16mm for these type of YouTube videos is not an option, so I was very excited to at least get a little glimpse of how these videos could potentially look like if they were shot on film. So, what is Dehancer? Dehancer is a plugin for film like color grading and film effects for both video and photography that is available over the course of different softwares as for example for Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, but also something like Photoshop, Lightroom and Capture One. And for this video here I am using the Final Cut Pro plugin. With Dehancer there are a number of different film profiles that you can apply to your footage, all the films that we love and used to love as for example Kodak Portra in various film speeds, something like Kodak Gold or Fuji C200, Sinistel 800T, but also films that are long gone as for example Kodak Chrome or even something like PAC film like Fuji FP100C. Unlike other film simulations that try to recreate the look of specific films digitally, Dehancer really took the time to study the real film material in the color darkroom, which makes for a really baked in and not only superficial film look. But to show you where my excitement comes from as a real analog geek, I will simply bring you with me into the Final Cut Pro plugin to show you all the film stocks that are available and show you all the film effects that you can apply. If you want to get started, you can simply download the Dehancer plugin for the software of your choice on their website. And there's a free trial so you can try out everything beforehand. But if you want to commit and if you want to purchase it, you can also use the link in the description box down below to get 10% off your purchase when using the code Karin Mayoka, which will also benefit the channel because I will earn a small commission from it, which I can use to buy more film to create more of these videos. Here I am in Final Cut Pro. And after you install the Dehancer plugin, you can find it when opening up the effects panel and it's labeled as film emulation. And when you start it for the very first time, it's important to go all the way down in the Dehancer menu and activate your license first and also import all of the film profiles so that you are ready to go. You can apply Dehancer by simply dragging and dropping it onto your clip, but it's recommended to make this the final step of your workflow so that all the other basic corrections like denoising, sharpening or basic exposure corrections should come first. And once you have done all that and want to apply some film look magic to your footage, you can choose which camera and which format you use to record the footage so that all of the film profiles can be applied correctly. And here already is where all the magic happens because we have a long list of all our beloved film stocks. We have Aqua films, we have Sinistel films, we have Fuji films, also something like Fuji Instax or FP100C, so even instant films available. We have a lot of Kodak Portra, we even have something like Aero Color or Kodak Vision motion picture films, we have Lomography films, we have Orvo films, just a lot of incredible film stocks. And if we click on them, you can already see what's happening to the footage and you will see a very first look, which you can also tweak a little bit later on. 
And if you want to tweak the exposure settings just a little bit, you can use the expand menu here to choose the black and the white points, for example. In the print menu here, you can select which type of paper you would like to have your film printed on, which I think is just crazy if you think about it, because it goes beyond only choosing your film stock, but you can also choose how this film stock would look like printed on different papers, as for example Kodak and Dura glossy paper. And here you have a couple of settings as well, like the exposure, the tonal contrast, color density or saturation setting, so you can really kind of simulate how you would work in a darkroom which is really crazy if you ask me. And if you are an even bigger darkroom geek, in the color head option you can also recreate all of the fine tuning of the different color channels as if you had a color enlarger in front of you. So if you for example like a film stock but one of the color channels kind of feels off to you, like for example having a bit too dominant blue or a green tint, you can simply use the color channels to compensate for that. And one important note regarding the effects is that many of them are turned off by default. So if you want to add them to your footage, you will have to check the enable button under each effect. And some of the effects also have an impact slider like this one here, where you can choose how strong you want the effect to be applied to your footage. And here is where it gets really interesting in my opinion, because here we are at the film grain option. You can choose the size of your film grain, the amount and also the film resolution. But more than that, you can also choose how the grain shall affect the shadows, the midtones and the highlights of your image. And I think that this is a very clever and very crucial thing because um, those film grain overlays that you can find online often look a little bit generic and real film doesn't behave like that. Real film won't have the same amount of grain on top of your whole image, but real film grain will affect the different areas, shadows, midtones and highlights differently. So I think it's really clever that the Hanser also added this, so you can kind of adjust uh, the film grain in more details than you would usually do with just a plain overlay. And here in the film type menu you can choose if you would like a grain that's more typical on negative or on positive film, because on positive film the grain is usually less dominant. And here you can also choose if you would like to have analog grain that was retrieved from real analog material or a digital grain that was created digitally in an experimental way. So let's move on to the halation tab. Halation is that typical red glow that you can find on cinema film when the ramjet layer is removed, which is usually associated with films like Cinestill 800T. And here in the Hanser you can actually add this halation digitally, which is something I haven't found on any other tool so far. And it's important to keep in mind that halation usually is affecting the highlight areas, most specifically the highlight areas where you have a strong contrast with kind of a darker area. And here um, you can adjust the halation by the source limiter, so the more you go to the left, the more halation is added, and the more you push the limiter to the right, the less halation is added. You can also uh, add some background gain, so you kind of push the halation a little bit more and with the smoothness, local diffusion and uh, global diffusion you can kind of choose how puffed out and how kind of diffused the halation shall be. With the amplify tool you can push the halation even a bit more and with the hue slider you can choose if your halation shall look like more orange or more red. And usually footage that is affected by halation appears to be a bit more blue, so with the blue compensation slider you can kind of counteract that. And here again you can choose how strong the impact of the halation shall be on your footage. And next we have the bloom option here, which can basically be understood as the softness of the highlights. And usually this happens with more vintage lenses, that in the highlight areas you will have kind of this glowy, more kind of soft effect, which a lot of people also recreate digitally by using something like uh, ProMist filters. But it's also something that you can add here in the enhancer in case you don't have such filters or you want to enhance this effect even more. So yet again, here you have a number of options that you can choose from to apply how strong your effect shall be. And here, for example, you also have a details tab where you can choose if you would like the bloom effect to be more kind of generally applied to the highlights or if you would like to have some bloom around some smaller details as well. And one thing to mention here is that some effects, such as the halation or the bloom effect, also have a mask mode, which you can choose to kind of preview which areas of your footage will be affected by the effect applied. 
The vignette option probably speaks for itself because most of us know the typical kind of vintage lens vignette where you either have a lighter or a darker kind of circle around your image because usually vintage len lenses would have some imperfections in their image quality. So usually what happens is that you will have like darker corners compared to the center. So here you have a couple of options to play around with to see if you would add some vintage vignette to your footage as well. And next we have the film breath option here. And film breath is something that you might not be familiar with. So film breath basically can be understood as some sort of pulsation that looks like the white balance of your images is kind of changing when the film continues moving, which is usually observed on older films, especially when played through a projector. So here the enhancer is kind of trying to recreate the film breath look and you have a couple of different things that you can adjust here as well. And um, I think just an important note is that you shall really look at your whole clip when adding the film breath option because you won't observe any changes when just looking at one film still, but it really affects kind of the flow of your frames in one clip. And here we have another effect that is called gate weave and this can be understood as some sort of micro motion or slight jitter in your footage. On real motion picture film this usually happens because the frames might not overlap 100% resulting in some sort of micro motion when being played back. And here I think the enhancer is trying to recreate this in a very organic manner. But just as with the film breath option, it's important to look through your whole clip when applying the gate weave uh, effect, because you won't see how an individual uh, still is affected by this, but it will kind of affect the motion of your frames. And I think the gate weave option really makes sense to add on kind of still footage or footage without any motion because I think in my opinion it's more pleasing to look at footage that has some sort of organic shake or organic kind of jitter in comparison to something that is 100% still. And last but not least we have another effect here called false color which looks a little bit silly if you apply it for the very first time but this is not meant to stay on your clip permanently but this is just a tool that helps you to analyze the color and the exposure of your clips. The false color effect is something that a lot of professional cameras have as a built-in tool because at first glance it can tell you something about your skin tones and over and under exposure of your frame. So skin tones should usually be in a pink green area to be correct and red color usually indicates overexposure in the highlights and purple color might indicate underexposure in the shadows. So if you are a little bit unsure you can just kind of quickly get a glance of your frame and see if there is something off. With the output dial here you can adjust how intense you want all of the aforementioned effects to be applied to your clip. So in case you feel like the whole look is a little bit too strong you can just dial it down a notch here. And one very interesting feature is the LUT generator that you can find here which is something that lets you create a LUT from the look you just created. And LUT is short for lookup table which is a very common kind of a method that is used for color correction and color grading so you can kind of create your own unique look and LUT from this which you can later use in different software as well that are capable of reading LUTs. So what is my verdict? If you couldn't tell already I really like the answer and I'm very grateful that I get to use it for my future projects as well. I think the Enhancer is a very solid tool that simplifies color grading and makes it very easy and very fast to apply the film look to your footage. To be honest, I am not as experienced when it comes to color grading and for these YouTube videos this has always been one of my biggest struggles. So having a very fast and very efficient option to support me in that is a real game changer for me personally. Also, I really love the option to make my video footage look like my favorite film stocks and for some projects it also makes a lot of sense. As for example, when I am trying out a specific film stock, it might make sense to match my video footage accordingly to get a coherent and more integrative look across my photo and video work. Further, I think that Dehancer is one of the most versatile and most precise tools that I came across so far when it comes to film simulating. Unlike other plugins or tools, it goes beyond only manipulating the colors, but I think because of the detailed options to manipulate grain and also add halation and bloom, it really changes the structure and texture of your footage and not only the colors like many other tools do. One thing that is worth discussing though is the price of Dehancer. 
You can either buy individual effects separately or you can buy packs as for example the light pack which will include all of the film presets and most of the effects or the pro pack that will include all of the film presets, all of the effects and an additional LUT generator and customer support. Generally, I would say that Dehancer is more on the higher price spectrum and probably targeted towards the professional videographer or cinematographer, but in my opinion it could be an interesting investment for beginners or amateurs or content creators on YouTube as well, because it will save you so much time in the long run. Only with this project alone it saved me a couple of hours color grading, so I think if you have multiple projects going on this could really be a clever investment. One thing to also take into account is that currently not all plugins run on all types of systems. For example, for this video here I use the Final Cut Pro plugin, even though Adobe Premiere Pro is usually my editing software of choice, and that is because the Dehancer plugin for Premiere Pro is currently only available for Windows and not for Mac. So at this point one of my biggest and dearest wishes would be that Dehancer will hopefully bring out the Premiere Pro plugin for Mac users as well. So this was everything for this video. I really hope that you liked the idea of getting a little glimpse into what our favorite film stocks might look like in video format. Of course, I would also be interested to hear about your thoughts, so please let me know what you think about the Hanser and also which feature of it you found the most interesting. That being said, I would say thanks for watching and see you in the next one.